All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about five knives that I don't think you should buy. Now, without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, and now let's jump into it. All right, so I want to say first before we dig into this too heavily about the five knives that I don't think you should buy. I actually only have one of the prime examples, but by and large, what I really want to hammer home with this video is that all these knives are tools. They do have usefulness and they are, you know, still useful, valuable pieces of equipment. So at the end of the day, if one of these five knives is actually useful for you, if you like it and you enjoy using it, carrying it, or if it really does serve your purposes or needs, definitely by all means means do buy it. This isn't necessarily saying that the knives we're going to mention here are poor quality, but I see a lot of these knives being pushed out and just pushed by the EDC community by people saying, you know, this is the best knife for the money. This is just what you have to buy. And so I think with each one of these examples, you'll see that um, these knives are just being almost senselessly pushed out. So whether they're quality tools or not, <clears throat> so whether they're quality tools or not, what I'm ultimately hammering home here is buy tools, buy knives, buy gear that is going to fit your purposes, fit your need, and not just jump along the hype train to buy knives that everyone is, is buying <clears throat> or knives that everyone wants to buy. So first one up on the hype train or the seriously overhyped knives is the Civivi Elementum. Now, part of this, I can see why the Civivi Elementum is such a popular knife. This one is the fixed version in D2. And this one I actually feel a little bit differently about because it's the fixed version and it's actually a really cool EDC knife. But the Civivi Elementum, similar to this one, same shape, is no doubt a very overhyped knife and comes in a million different flavors and sizes, different locking mechanisms, obviously fixed blades, and folders. Now, I will say this about the Civivi Elementum. I do think that it is a really well-designed blade, and uh, I think that that is why it is so popular, is that it does honestly fit the needs of many people, myself included. That's why I do have the fixed blade version of the Elementum, and I don't think that this knife is actually a bad knife. I just think that the Elementum kind of is the best example, maybe, of this whole list of knives that is being pushed by pretty much every everyday carry content creator and they're saying oh you got to buy this for the price it's the best thing in the industry and when you just see one knife being shilled out it really kind of is disheartening because while the Civivi Elementum by no means is a bad knife for the budget uh, you know this one can be gotten for around $70 and it's a pretty good fixed blade but at the same time too there's lots of other good fixed blades and at the same time too when it comes to folders there's plenty of other good folders aside from the Elementum so I really see a concentrated effort to push the Elementum out and uh, I really just think that you know it is a good knife it's a just fine design and Civivi and slash we did a good job at designing the knife but it is one of those knives that's being pushed out and bought by people simply because it's just the knife you buy and so I think that we have to watch ourselves in the culture of the knife community and EDC community as a whole that we're not just pushing out uh, or that we're not just blindly recommending things but that we truly do, you know, see all aspects or at least see all of the competitive options out there because the Civivi Elementum is at the top of everyone's radar because it's reasonably new, but there are plenty of other good knives in the territory of the Civivi Elementum, things like the, um, the Mini Grip by Benchmade, especially the used models you can get for, you know, around the same price as Civivi Elementums, and it's a fantastic knife as well. There's plenty of spider codes out there like the Tenacious and uh, Delica that are in the same price range as the Civivi Elementum around the same size range, and they're equally good knives as well. So, you know, you do have to be cautious and conscious of just going along with what everyone is telling you to do. So... That's the first one. Next one up on the list is one that I don't have. And like I said, I don't have all of these because I really try to stay away from these types of knives. But the next one is the Wii Banter. Now, this isn't a criticizing or criticism of the designer of the Wii Banter. I think that Ben um, is a fantastic guy. I really do like all that he did with Blade HQ. And even though I'm not the largest fan of Blade HQ anymore because they're kind of a little bit weird nowadays, but 
Um, the Banter is a really neat knife, but once again, I feel like the Banter is becoming a poster child of, oh, you should just buy this knife because that's what you should buy. And you know, everyone looking for good EDC knives, especially people who are beginning, once again, they're, you know, the Wii Banter is around the same price as things like the Mini Grip, like the different, more budget-oriented Spider Co's, and plenty of other really solid knives out there. But the Banter is just being pushed and hyped up because it's the latest, coolest, and the greatest, so to speak. In addition to, I'm really not a huge fan of the fact that the banter is being pushed out, you know, with like Wii, like Nintendo Wii, you know, styled handles, um, you know, like donut or dessert operator style handles, and just all these different things that I think, you know, it was started off as kind of a meme or a kind of funny joke to laugh. It's becoming extremely serious. And what it really does uh, when people that aren't in our community, like the fun thing about is that people in the community get it and it's kind of an inside joke for everyone that's in the community but when people who are either new to the community or either outside of the community look at these things they will definitely question you and say you know like what the hell is this and by and large it makes them take us a lot less serious which is never great for improving edc's image especially when you are incorporating things like firearms or things like double-edged daggers that are a little bit more scary you know you do want people to understand listen to and respect your opinion and so by you know doing things that are really whimsical or kind of childish um you kind of can it can kind of degrade that point so that's the banter um next one up the next one up is, of course, naturally leading into it, all of the Dessert Warrior stuff. Um, the Dessert Warrior kind of mantra is really big. Once again, it started off as a meme or kind of an inside joke with the Boker Tactic or Boker um, Kalashnikov Desert Warrior. And then someone misspelled it or mistyped it and it became the Dessert Warrior. And then they made a whole meme about it with the actual Kalashnikov. Um, and then it kind of just grew into things like the banter, the Savivi, um, even people like Zippo are doing collabs and so it's not just knife gear anymore there's uh like Hanks the EDC Hanks that are being produced with it and all kinds of things and sure once again it's lighthearted, it's funny and it may be able to be a conversation starter but by and large when I think about EDC you know it's like we carry some pretty serious and sometimes pretty scary stuff so being able to be taken seriously and not necessarily like in an intimidation way but you know being taken seriously so that we can explain you know why we might carry something like this a double-edged dagger or something like a handgun for everyday carry you know trying to go from oh weren't you just carrying you know that donut colored knife to a dagger or a handgun that has a red dot sight and looks you know intimidating or scary um, can make that harder and so i think as a whole thick or objective with my edc and once again this doesn't mean that you can't be lighthearted, you can't have fun or you can't have you know wild colors on your knives once again one of my edc knives is uh, like one of my hinders one of my favorite xm18 is pretty purpled out so you know i'm not saying that you can't have fun with it and enjoy it but at the same time too i try to stay more serious and once again you know i will say that i think the core objective to edc is to find things that you enjoy but also things that are reasonably professional um, that's just my opinion though maybe carrying a donut colored knife maybe carrying a donut colored knife is the move and i'm just missing out on it also, I should note too that even though these knives are, you know, um, donut colored or donut themed, I should say, with sprinkles and everything, they are still serious tools and very much, you know, very effective tools. And I think that that is part of, uh, part of a good thing and part of a bad thing. They're totally functional but at the same time too. Do make sure that if people aren't in the knife community that they do understand that the things like the Elementum, the automatic Benchmade, or not Benchmade, the automatic uh, Boker Kalashnikov still can be a very serious tool. I think they even make like double-edged versions of the Dessert Warrior. So still very much, um, or bayonet style versions of the Boker Kalashnikov. So still very much tactical tools. They just don't look that way. So that kind of objective or that optic of of kind of looking at EDC is not the greatest. 
Okay, the next one for me, and this is one that probably I dislike the most, just personally, and that's because if you guys know, if you know the color of my truck, you know the color of a lot of stuff that I like, I really am a huge fan of Flat Dark Earth, and I actually really do like all of Drab Green, and this is kind of unofficially taken on the avocado terminology in everyday carry, where you have a knife that has a flat dark earth or tan themed uh, half to the blade, and then a green, kind of OD green, uh, secondary half. So sometimes it's the blade that's OD green and the handle's desert tan. Most of the time though, you'll see that the blade is FDE or tan and the handle is OD green. So this is a good example of avocado and I did not buy this knife uh, because of that trend. I actually got this knife well before the avocado trend began, but the Benchmade Mini Adamus and Full Size Adamus were kind of like the beginning or like kind of the start of this color um, coloration, but a lot of knives have been coming out through River's Edge Cutlery that have this coloration. Things like the Spyderco Manix 2, things like the Spyderco Shaman, and other um, tools, things such as the Lynch um, Northwest pry bars, or I think they call them all access passes. They're just essentially titanium pry bars in these types of colors. Of course, similar to the Dessert Warrior, there's been hanks like avocado themed hanks and stuff like that that have come out as well. But once again, uh, with this one, I think that it's a little bit different. So with the Dessert Warrior, it's more of like, you're not really taking things serious. It's kind of like a childish thing. And that's definitely not the best optic to have your EDC tools under. But with this one, it's a huge hype train and the knives are just super, super overpriced. So this one isn't necessarily a good op. Uh, this one isn't necessarily a good example of the priciness because these uh, avocado colored mini Adamuses are not really a part of the hype train, but the limited edition REC versions of the Manix 2 and the Shaman especially are knives that sold on drop and normally retail for around $200 to $250. And they are averaging on places like eBay, Facebook, just about anywhere you can buy them. They're averaging for at least $350 to $400, if not sometimes more. And so once again, this is something that's like super overhyped and it does look like a very attractive coloration. Once again, it's one of my favorite colorations because I really like FDE especially. Um, and I think that OD Green really uh, complements it very well. But at the same time too, once again, it's like these are practical tools. We're supposed to be using them. And I think that we're starting to push into this point where a lot of people getting into everyday carry aren't really getting into everyday carry to have practical, useful tools for opening boxes or for you know, opening packages or even, you know, wilderness tasks like starting fires and stuff. They don't really want tools for those reasons. They just want tools to literally look cool. It's becoming a lot more like the sneaker world where, you know, people are paying, uh, absorbent prices for sneakers once again and most of the time they're not even really wearing the sneakers which kind of makes sense because similar to knives you know of course if you use them if you sharpen them if you do anything like that even just carrying them you know wear day to day similar to shoes you know if you walk around in them they are a consumable object right so knives are consumable um, a lot slower than a shoe of course but the more you wear on them the less value they have so a lot of these things are you know knives are being picked up purely for being flipped or resold for much higher prices or people are collecting them with the end objective of selling them again. And so I think that really defeats the purpose of actually, you know, like what the EDC community initially began as. And I think a lot of people are, you know, either A, trying to collect them or B, trying to, you know, flex how much money they have through use of inanimate objects. And once again, that's always going to be present in pretty much every community. You know, there are a lot of communities like that in general with like things like cars or things like shoes, watches, um, you name it. You know, any of these kind of collectibles can be just flaunted. But once again, it's kind of a shame to see because I've been in the EDC community for a long time. And when I initially got into it, you know, it was very much utilitarian. And, you know, sure, people were taking pictures of how much, you know, they liked a knife or if they really carried a knife often or what they carried frequently. But, uh, you know, people are just posting pictures 
manufacturers to flaunt like, oh, I have the limited edition uh, version of that knife in the avocado color. And, you know, they're coming with things like tokens of, you know, like they're coming with different like avocado themed tokens and stuff like that. And I think that it's like, it's one thing to have a really attractive coloration of a knife or really cool looking knife, but it's a totally different thing when you're trying to make it like a collector's item by selling it with tokens, certificates of authenticity. And uh, yeah, I think it's just taking it a step too far because really we should be focusing more on like the practical utility of the tools. So kind of opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to, you know, like the dessert warriors not taking things serious enough, but uh, this is like pretty much just pure hyped up hype train kind of stuff where people are spending it absorbent amounts of money on things that you know these tools really honestly are worth about 200 to 250 bucks do not spend 400 dollars on one regardless to how cool it looks okay last one up on this last one up on the hype train and it once again is probably going to look like i'm against ben from nafs co um but this one is the nafs lander and this is the new knife that he released and i'm just going to be holding and playing with different knives for just uh keepsake or just for uh, the fun of it these don't have any relevance to that knife but um yeah so the nafs lander is the newest edition of knife that he released and is heavily inspired by things like the banter the elementum and you know many of those different kind of chinese higher end higher end knives uh, that are coming out of china in fact the lander is made by qsp which is another chinese company similar pretty similar to civivi i think they are related to riate but i could be entirely wrong on that one and don't quote me but uh, ultimately once again i think the primary um kind of push for the NAF slander is the fact that it's really hammering hard all of the different options things such as you know like change uh, removable or exchangeable handle scales and different things like that that really um, you know there are certain knives like the hinders that are well known for that but by and large when that's your main claim to fame like the knife you know is still made in China it's still a budget blade but you're really trying to push like your sales towards handle options and stuff um, it definitely kind of makes me feel a little bit jaded because they're trying to make the knife out to be like the primary reason why you'd want a lander is because it is so customizable and there are certainly like i said you know hinderer is a good high-end example of knives that are customizable but it's more if you want to make it your own or personalize it you have that option whereas with the lander it's like the primary marketing is for its interchangeability so there's a difference between making it a main stay in your kind of marketing as opposed to the option that is, exists at least in my opinion so i think they're pushing like a sub quality or not necessarily like a sub quality product but you know they're pushing out you know a you know a eh quality blade you know a budget blade that they're really trying to upsell you on uh, handles and so i think like the biggest reason i dislike it and why i don't think you should go for it is that you know you're getting a knife that has okay steel okay action okay performance but they're really hoping for an okay price so at the core at the base the lander is a good knife like it's a you know budget knife with budget materials but what they're really hoping you'll do is buy the knife buy multiple different sets of handles and you know kind of go along the hype train to uh you know make the knife a lot more expensive so before you know it i believe the knife goes for about you know 60 dollars. but before you know it you're gonna have so much money in accessories for this knife that that you know 60 dollar knife which was a good deal at 60 is now costed you or has now costed you you know 120 uh, to 150 dollars. so now they're trying to upsell you on the accessories that you can accessorize your knife ultimately turning a budget blade into something that is not budget and so i guess hopefully that kind of a breakdown makes sense that's why i'm trying to explain it because i'm not trying to say that they're wrong for you know wanting a knife that has interchangeable scales or you know the interchangeability of parts components is cool uh, things like hinderer also have that but the thing is with a hinderer you're getting into an expensive knife that is very high quality very well built and it's not really being marketed or pushed as a a knife that you can interchange at scales you know that's a part of it but that's not the marketing scheme so you're still getting a quality blade that you can customize if you want whereas the lander the lander is literally that that's its 
like primary sale. And they're hoping that you invest in scales, invest in accessories so that you can put more money into the knife. Anyways, guys, those are the five knives that I think you should avoid. Once again, at the core, they all are good knives, but I think there's trends and ideas that I'm not so wild about. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.